Um, but moving on to our next speaker, um, uh, Garhanu Abagaz is professor of economics at William Mary. He received his AP from Princeton University and his PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. His teaching interests encompass macroeconomic theory, regional economic integration, comparative economics, and development economics. His research interests include structural convergence in manufacturing industries between leaders and uh, latecomers, speaking of globalization, the role of diversified business groups in emerging economies, African industrialization, and poverty traps in Ethiopia's agrarian system. He also directs the Africana Studies Program at the college. Please join me. Of the, the, the source of the debate that I think all of us have 
the best interests of our undergraduates in mind. We just have different views about how best to, uh, to serve them. When I think of the, the liberal arts curriculum, uh, I think of three legs. We have the general education requirements and the typical preliminary freshman with no transfer credits would spend about 45% of her time taking genetic courses right now. Then we have a second leg, and that is the major. And a typical major student would spend about 30% of her time fulfilling concentration or major requirements. And then we have 25% or so left over, the electives, which basically grant the greatest freedom to students to sample uh, to, to take weird courses, fun courses, maybe to have a minor, maybe to have a second concentration. And we like to say that that portion of the curriculum should not be adversely affected by all sorts of unnecessary, unnecessary requirements. And that's why it's absolutely important that we devise a genuine curriculum so that we do the minimum restriction, but at the same time guarantee that all students have a common foundation and a solid foundation. That's sort of the, the, the focus of the, the debate. Now, now that Josh has, has summarized the, uh, the basic uh, uh, pillars of the new curriculum, let me just uh, provoke you uh, by sort of listing concerns I have um, and, and that many, many faculty have, have, have expressed um, about the, uh, the proposed curriculum. Now, when, um, uh, what, what, I guess one question we can ask is, uh, what do we gain from the new curriculum? What do I like about the new curriculum? There are many things I like about, about the proposal. I like the idea, for example, that more students would be taught by tenure track faculty uh, under the new curriculum. Um, that, was, that, that was the case under the, the GR. This is not generic, this is not inherent in the new curriculum, but, but I like the idea of, of limiting um, transfer credits and, and insisting that uh, the best faculty we have, uh, especially since we're interested in producing teacher and scholars, uh, we like courses that fuse teaching and research, and therefore that idea uh, it is very attractive to me. There is no guarantee in the new curriculum that the administration will deliver that. It's more of a recommendation, but the idea is, is, uh, is good. I also like the idea of introducing uh, College 100 uh, which focuses on big ideas. Uh, I think it's very important that at the outset, the freshman year, that students are introduced with big ideas, with deal, begin to deal with complexity and realize that there are no simple answers, but those big ideas are very important, they are achievements of, of our uh, greatest civilizations. So I like, I like that idea too. Um, I also like, um, and, and again, I, I may disagree with some of the panelists on, on, on this account, um, I have spent a good deal of my time um, arguing and making a case for interdisciplinary courses, um, but I also like those interdisciplinary courses to be well designed and rigorous. And, and coming up with well designed and rigorous interdisciplinary courses and programs is exceedingly difficult. It has to be done well. But at the same time, it also has to be offered at the right stage in the student's career. That is, there's got to be, as, as Matt noted, some understanding of basic disciplines uh, so that students can meaningfully uh, connect various disciplines. Uh, uh, to build bridges, to build connections, you have to have some understanding of, of the foundation. So if it is done right, um, I like the, the idea of interdisciplinarity. The proposal actually doesn't mention the word interdisciplinarity and it fudges a lot. Um, so in some sense, it is not interdisciplinary enough for me. So these are the three things I, uh, I like about, about the proposal. There are some things I uh, am very much concerned about the proposal, and let me just list them for you. Um, unlike uh, under the current GR, and by the way, when, when we moved from the area sequence requirements, whereby we had divided the, the curriculum into three broad domains, humanities, social sciences, and the natural sciences. And then we said, take a certain number of courses from each of these domains, but we also want you to develop some data outside the area of your, your major. That's the sequence part. So take two, pick a board, uh, department where you took your, your distribution requirements, let's say biology, you've taken two courses, and then we, we force you to take two additional courses in biology, so that in effect you have a quasi-minor. That was the way uh, we thought it would 
would be a, a good trade-off between uh, grace and, and death. Then we said, that, that's not good enough. We, that, that students are graduating with no you know, historical sense, for example, with no understanding of non-Western civilizations and so on. So we said, well, let's move away from this area sequence requirement and then divide the, the, the various knowledge areas into, into nine, if you leave out mathematical reasoning or quantitative reasoning, into nine well-defined areas. That's what we have now, the GR. And I like the GR. And there are many excellent universities, including Princeton, who use pretty much a version of the, the GR model. That, that's sort of how uh, we move to the area sequence to, uh, to the GR. And now we're moving back to the area sequence model of three domains, differently described. Um, and, and then on top of that, we, we are uh, adding uh, college courses. So, so what do we lose by giving up uh, uh, the GR? Um, I think one could reasonably argue that a significant number of women and undergraduates can and will likely graduate without taking a single lab science course, a single core social science course, economics, political science, psychology, sociology, uh, for example, a single um, course in a large swath of the humanities, because all the humanities are, uh, will be lumped, into, into pretty much one, whereas the GR divides them into at least three distinct areas. Um, a single history course, much less uh, a course on Northwestern uh, traditions, and, and probably uh, uh, without even taking a single genuinely interdisciplinary course, uh, in spite of all the rhetoric about, about interdisciplinarity. That's one set of words I have. The second set of worries I have is with College 300, which uh, sometimes is described as international. It isn't. College 300, the way it's described, and we haven't approved it yet, but, but the text basically uh, characterizes it as a cross cultural course. Uh, it's not good. It could deal with, with international issues, it could deal with uh, multicultural issues at home, uh, it talks about a, a different environment, it, it, it uses the word. We have a in the world, and whenever you hear the word world, you mean the external world outside the borders of the United States, but that's not what, what the, the designer seems to, to have. It could be as close as Colonial Williamsburg or as far as, as Tokyo. So it's an, an ill-described, uh, ill-conceived uh, notion. I like a much more determined uh, uh, requirement which basically says that the world is globalizing, whether it is economic globalization or, or cultural globalization, and, and if we want William and Mary to be a global university, uh, which it is, uh, we would like our students to be culturally literate in the, in the global sense of, of the word, and we should have well-designed courses uh, to expose them uh, so that they will be knowledgeable citizens. They're going to, as leaders of the United States, they're going to interact with, with the rest of the world. And whether you like it or not, even in the economic field, um, the U.S. produces no more than 25% of global income. 75% of it is outside the United States. And even if you include Europe, half of the global income is now outside the West. So there is, so it's, it's absolutely important that we prepare them to understand this brave new world. Um, with respect to College 400, which is now, the mandate of the, the committee was, was to focus on the general aid curriculum, but at the same time there was reference to integrating it across four years, and now it's moving to, to, to uh, 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 dictate what, what the departments and disciplines ought to do. And in the latest version, this College 100 basically insists on some sort of a capstone experience, okay, some sort of a, a thesis experience, advanced seminar, or a research experience. Um, done by departments. So instead of recommending, as the, the, the committee did uh, 20 years ago, that every William uh, uh, student should have a capstone experience and the university should find the resources to, to do that, um, this new proposal uh, makes it a part of the, the, the general curriculum when in fact uh, it isn't. So I, I, I recommend that we, 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 uh, we scrap that. So, so basically, my uh, overall concern is that looking at the new curriculum through the experience of students uh, going through it, uh, because it's a graduation requirement, that they are going to end up 
having a very unbalanced educational experience. That this excessive flexibility is going to enable many students to avoid hard and strange sounding courses. To our humanities students alike can easily avoid science, uh, social science students can easily afford, uh, avoid many humanities uh, under the current plan. That the availability of courses is going to be supplied to you. In other words, the university under budgetary uh, uh, constraints is going to look for courses in departments that are overstaffed um, and therefore those departments will eagerly uh, supply these courses whereas uh, other departments that are high demand uh, will not be able to participate uh, uh, as vigorously in the new curriculum. So in effect, the quality of education is going to be driven by pre-existing faculty resources or the distribution of faculty resources rather than the needs of students. It, it won't be demand driving supply, it's actually supply driving demand. And to me, that's, that, that's a very disturbing way of designing, uh, designing a new curriculum. Um, perhaps this is a bit technical, but, but if you look at the, uh, the, the design of uh, the, the domain courses, the, the, the quality 200 courses, there are four credit courses, and yet we require students to take just one, two credit courses per domain. So you have this top heavy uh, uh, course that's supposed to help them integrate <coughs> Uh, something that they don't have a good foundation on, that is standing on a tiny day. That by itself is, is to me, a, a, design, a design flow. And as finally, as Josh indicated, there's no evidence that, that students will do the right thing if we give them this flexibility, which may be good for faculty, which may be good for administration, the administration, because they can always um, um, put courses willy-nilly and, 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 and push our students through the graduation requirements, but it would be a disservice to, to our students. Um, what are the alternatives? Uh, if, if, if you just grant me two minutes. Um, what are the, I, 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 I can think of two credible alternatives. Um, one alternative would be to go for a GER class model, meaning take the, the two or three good ideas uh, and then graph them to the current GER model, because those ideas are not unique to the new, the new curriculum. And, and what exactly do I mean by that? Well, I like, for example, uh, College 100, it is well designed. There is nothing that prevents that from adding College uh, 100 to the current GR curriculum. Um, I like the idea of limiting the number of IP transfer credits. There is nothing that prevents us from enforcing that on top of the, the current GR uh, credit. Um, I think there's a great need to to, to make sure that high demand departments have enough resources so that students who wish to take those courses can take them. That's one of the, the biggest complaints of, of the current system, that students cannot get into history courses or, or in some cases, economics courses and many other departments. Um, resources should, should, should be allocated to meet the, the, the needs of students as, as students express them rather than uh, uh, we dictate uh, those terms. And finally, I think the university ought to recognize teaching excellence and, and should support pedagogical innovations. Uh, whatever curriculum we adopt, uh, I think that's very, very important. That's what makes us distinctive, that with limited resources that we can provide such a world-class education, I think it says a lot about the commitment of the faculty for students, uh, but also the importance of education, that research universities cannot um, provide that kind of quality of education that we can provide while also doing, doing research. So anyway, so, so I say with, 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 with limited disruption, we can improve the current curriculum, preserve all the advantages of the GR, but at the same time also grab the one or two good ideas from the new curriculum. That's one way to go. The other way to go is, is actually to, to rethink uh, the, the proposal. Um, uh, which is uh, highly likely. Uh, but in this, uh, here are some things that, that we can do. Uh, as Josh mentioned, uh, there is no need to go from nine domains to three domains. And in fact, the two domains, really, the humanities and social science domains, if you just remove a couple of words, they, they sound the same to me. So, so in fact, what we have with is natural sciences and everything, everything else. Um, sure, we have 30 plus departments. We can require students to take one course from each 
and that would be 90 credits, and you don't have to stay for five years. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or we can say, you know, go domain, take, you know, we'll advise you and take meaningful courses. That may be just too flexible. And there, must, there is a happy medium between the two. And there's a proposal uh, to go for five or six domains instead of the nine we have now and three that have been proposed. That's one, one serious amendment. Um, a second one would be, and, and that's, uh, that's me, I've been fighting uh, uh, to globalize the power curriculum. It's much uh, more globalized today than it was uh, when I came here. Uh, and we're not globalizing really, really. Uh, is to restore the world cultures and history uh, requirement by simply scrapping uh, quality 300 and quality 400. So whatever credits we say there, we can have, I think, an explicit requirement uh, there. And finally, I think we, we ought to, again, uh, to provide the requisite resources uh, so that every women may graduate will have a meaningful capstone experience. Uh, they do have a meaningful uh, a gateway experience. Our freshman seminar is, is well designed and excellent. And if we add College 100, it's a big idea course on top of it. That's just a wonderful gateway experience. But at the end, they should be able to have an opportunity to bring together what they learned from their Gen 8 courses, from their majors, and from their electives, and apply them to well-defined areas, and, and thereby facilitate the school to work transition or the school to graduate, or with the graduate school transition. Thank you so much.